Hey everybody, Doug here. I've got kind of a fun video for you here today. Um, we're going to be taking a few minutes to install an SSD into this HyperDeck Studio 4K Pro because with the latest firmware update, Blackmagic Surprise announced that this unit actually has the hardware inside to provide a cache for the recording capability. So it's only available in the 4K Pro, so other HyperDeck Studios do not support this. Uh, but this is a feature they've had in some of the Extreme models, and honestly I was kind of a little bit jealous that it wasn't something that was available on the Studio line. But here it is. Uh, the, there's been a place inside this unit all along to add an SSD. They just hadn't enabled it in software just yet. So we're going to walk through opening up the unit, installing the cache, and getting that set up in the menus and then kind of demonstrating what it's capable of. But first of all, let me kind of explain what's going on with the cache and why we would want one. So sometimes <laughs> when we're using these devices, uh, we maybe forget that our disk may be filling up and we don't have a, a second one ready to go, or we're happening, happening to use media that isn't quite fast enough to keep up with the data rates that we're recording, especially if we're recording 4K and we're using some less expensive media. So what the cache does is allows us to store any of that data that can't be written to the disk for whatever reason uh, temporarily in the cache until we have a chance to swap that out uh, with something that's faster or stop recording and then give the disk time to uh, to have the data written to it. We're going to go through the whole process here. I'm going to be using a Lexar NM790 SSD here today and I bought this exclusively for this purpose. I did some testing pr uh, earlier today with the Samsung 980 Pro, and it worked just fine. But in this case, I'm going to be using this Lexar uh, because this is actually a little bit better equipped to handle long write sessions than the Samsung is. So when I did my last video on re recording media and SSDs it says specifically, this drive was, was not out yet, uh, and so I couldn't test it. But I've since tested it and found that this is the best of any of the drives that I own in terms of long write sessions, like we're writing a lot of data at once, sequentially, back to back. This one outperformed everything else that I tested by a very wide margin. It was not even close. Uh, so this is a, a great drive for this particular application where you know you're going to be writing a lot of data in at one time. So yeah, so this is the Lexar NM790 and I'm going with the one terabyte version, which gives us an awful lot of buffer time. There's really no need to go with one this big. I just I just did it just in case, you know, why not? So, so that's, that's what it is. But uh, in addition to that, you also need to have some screws to install this drive because the uh, mounting bracket in here, um, well, there is none. So there's a place to put screws. And so I picked up this kit uh, on Amazon that uh, has the necessary hardware in order to make this work. So the big piece that's missing is there's no standoff uh, from the motherboard, uh, no place to put a screw in to secure the SSD to the motherboard. All right, the first thing we need to do before we actually get started on this project is make sure that we get the software inside the unit up to date. And you're going to want to do this if you have any of the current model of HyperDex. They've added a lot of cool features in this latest release. But in order to, to, to install that, it's pretty simple. You just go to uh, blackmagicdesign.com and click up here on support. And then go over to disk duplication, uh, sorry, duplication, disk recorders, and storage. And click on that and then scroll down a little bit and you can see that HyperDex 8.4 update and download for either Mac OS or Windows, whichever you happen to be on. Install that software and then you'll run HyperDeck Setup Utility. Connect the device, preferably over USB. The firmware operates, I believe, can be done over Ethernet as well. It's better to do over USB, so plug in a USB C cable to the back of the device and then in, in your computer. And then once you're in the software, you click on the button uh, there to show the properties of the connected device and it'll prompt you to do the update right then. And then once you've got that done, you're actually ready to start the next portion of this process, which is to disassemble the unit. For anybody that's wanting to attempt this, attempt this on your own, uh, let's let you know that there are four, five screws here, three here, and then there's actually another one underneath this label, just under this corner. And then on the side, there's a screw here. And we've got two screws here that hold the rack ear in place. Those are hex, and I believe it's a two millimeter. And then there's a, another screw underneath there, and then the same thing on the other side. So we'll just go ahead and walk through that. And most likely, I'm going to fast forward in video editing, but to kind of give you an idea of what this process looks like. So I'm going to remove 
all nine screws from the top first. Of course, it should probably go without saying that don't attempt this if you're not comfortable working around electronics. And speaking of which, I'm actually going to flip off the power switch on this so that there is no power inside. But I'm going to leave the cord plugged in so that the unit is grounded. So, all right, there we go. So, no power. Um, it's not turned on. S screen is black, right? And but I, again, I'm leaving the power plugged in just so I have a ground there, just to be safe. Additional warning that in some cases this might void warranties, but I think in this case Blackmagic would probably make an exception because they are explicitly supporting this feature. So in, or in order to enable the feature, you do have to open up the device to install that SSD. So. But if you are someone who's not comfortable doing this, maybe take a friend who is comfortable doing these kinds of things out to lunch and ask them a favor. It's easy to do. I don't necessarily recommend using a, a power drill like this to do this, but I've been doing this for 30 years. I have a pretty good feel for when to stop and how much pressure to apply. Screws used in the rack ears are pretty bit, uh, uh, much bigger than the others. I'll get those mixed up. All the rest of the screws are the same. Right here. Screw behind that. You'll be able to see that on camera. Of course, you don't want to lose the screws like I just did. All right, last screw. that and remove the top cover and we take a look around inside we can see that there is a slot for an m.2 nvme based ssd right there and you also notice that there are screws here for holding the drive down i'm sorry screw there are threads there for holding the screw down but no actual screws in place for that purpose so that's where this kit comes in comes into play if you happen to have extras of these kinds of things laying around. Of course, you don't have to buy one, but I've somehow managed to not need to buy one all these years that I've been using and the SSD, so I did have to place an order to get this. There are, in this particular kit, there are two different heights of standoffs. There's a shorter one and a taller one. Um, the threads on the shorter one aren't long enough to reach down in there, inside there, so I have to use the taller one. Uh, unfortunately, that does mean that the SSD is sitting at a very slight angle, but it's but it's fine. It, it, it still doesn't make just make contact without an issue. So I'm grab one of the taller standoffs and then one of the screws. Uh, okay, there's three heights of standoffs in there. There's a shorter one too. So, short, medium, and tall. I'm going with the tall. And grab a screw. Make sure that there is no power. There, yep, it's turned off. And I'm going to grab that standoff. All right, so I'm going to use needle nose pliers to install this. Not the, It's not the right tool to do it, but. I do not have any nut drivers that are at the exact right size for this, so I have to improvise just a little bit. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to place just a little dot of thread blocker on there. Since this is in my trailer and it bounces around a little bit, I don't want to have any screws uh, that are going to work their way loose. So just a little tiny dot. There we go. That will Help to make sure that this never goes anywhere. I'll go ahead and install this. I'm using an 80 millimeter, and that goes in the hold its third position away from the connector. So it's 
screw it down finger tight first. And then grab the needle nose. Again, this is not the right tool for this, but it's what I have handy. So, and then just a little bit more. And the thread locker is going to do most of the work here. Prevent that from going anywhere. Okay. All right. And with that, I'm going to grab the SSD. Notice I'm touching the, the chassis often to ground myself so that no static enters the picture here. I do that, I, I do that instead of using uh, straps on my wrist or whatever. So, I insert that. You insert it in an angle. And I can't see that very well, but it's at, by, 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 probably about a 25 degree angle there. And then lower it into place. Line it up with where that screw hole is. And then grab that screw and use this absolutely terrible screwdriver to screw it down. And you know what? I'm going to do just a little bit of thread locker on the screw too. There we go. Just a tiny, tiny bit. That smells like fruit. Interesting. All right. go. Screw that down. Okay. There it is. That's very secure. That's not going anywhere. All right. Now, just for safety purposes, I'm going to put the cover back on. Not necessarily screw it down completely, but I don't want to accidentally touch something that's high voltage. Most, most of the high voltage stuff is over here and it's covered, so you're relatively safe, but you still just avoid possible issues when you can. Got four screws in there to hold it in place, and from there, put the power on. And I flip that around. And see, there it is. It's, it's booted. All right, and then just to kind of demonstrate that there is. Now storage media inside the device. I'm gonna unplug all the other drives. But what we need to do here is we need to actually format this disk and then we need to enable the recording cache. So it's gonna be a little tricky for me to see where I'm at here, but. So you go into the setup menu, I believe it is. Scroll down until we find Format cache, second to last option. All right, so I'm gonna hit set on that and say format. That's gonna format that SSD that's inside the, the unit there. Okay, it's ready to go. All right, and then we, I'm gonna go back to, it's not, okay, there, it's under the record menu, there we go. Record cache on, so you've got, you've got on and option, off options there. So with that, with that on, uh, the record, recording cache feature is now enabled. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and plug in recorder to a video source. There we go, so you're seeing the same recording that you're watching. And i show you that there's no drives, no SSDs, no SD cards, nothing in the USB port at the back, and no network, so I can't take advantage of the new network recording feature. But I can, there we go, start recording. Now I've got three hours and 49 minutes and 42 seconds of available recording time using the internal cache. So it's flashing the stop button, button letting me know that, hey, I'm recording on the cache rather than uh, on one of the inserted media. So you can tell at a glance that you probably got to do something. So, all right, with that, I'm gonna take one of my SSDs. Can't really see that, there we go. And just pop that in there. And there we go, now it's recording to that SSD. So it should be entering, in, Emptying the buffer. Yep, it is. So it's emptying the cache to the SSD, and now we're recording on the SSD, and the cache is, the, is just there as a backup. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, we've got pretty good protection there. All right, so I've got a, another SSD here that's not quite as fast. Um, it might be able to keep up, but I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna check and see. So we'll take that, insert that in the second there, and. Now we're now it's still recording on the first one. If I want to switch it to the second SSD, I can just press and hold the record button. There we go. And now it's recording on the second drive. Uh, now, if, if in theory uh, that drive was not fast enough, the cache would 
hold the data temporarily until it has a chance to write to it. But I think this drive is probably fast enough. I don't think there are many SSDs out there that are not fast enough to handle this, at least at the beginning. Once you fill some of their buffer DRAM or SLC cache buffer, they can slow down quite a bit. But So anyway, there it is. It's working, and uh, the cache is doing what it's supposed to do. All right, there we go. There it is. It's uh, it's all working. It's recording. It's caching. It's doing what it's supposed to do. Um, I'm going to bring up the on-screen menu here. So you get... There we go. So this is the monitor output of this recorder. Uh, it's going to be in HD and rather than 4K, so a little bit of loss of resolution here. But anyway, so you can see on screen uh, some status information. You can see in the upper right there, it actually says cache. And if the status of the cache uh, changes, um, I believe that changes color. And the manual doesn't say much. In fact, speaking of the manual, uh, just kind of read over what it does say. There it is. Record cache. So let me blow this up a little bit. So uh, for HyperDeck Studio 4K Pro models with optional cache, you can choose to turn the cache on via or off via the record menu. The cache is beneficial when recording at higher frame rates and resolutions on lower speed media. However, it can introduce latency, which you may want to avoid in some workflows, such as working with growing files in, files in DaVinci Resolve. To turn the record cache off, go to the record menu, press set, use the search dial to select record cache setting, and press the flashing set button to toggle between on and off. So it's worth noting that turning the cache off while it's transferring stored media will pause the transfer and the clip will be split into two files. So the transfer will resume once record cache is turned back on. So that's the sum total of what the manual says about this caching feature. So uh, take it for what it is. Not a lot going on there. So anyway, um, that's really about it. Uh, if you do want to take on this project, um, I very much do highly recommend this Lexar drive. Um, no affiliation, just a happy customer. Uh, this is the NM790. I've, I've used these quite a bit now, um, not just in video production related equipment, but actually this is my primary drive now for when I'm doing video editing. It's consistently fast. In fact, um, let me sh kind of show you guys performance data on this thing. Okay, so of all the drives that I have cataloged, this one is the fastest. I'm just going to reduce, reduce this just to internal SSDs. There we go. So, view. All right, so of all the drives that I've cataloged, this one offers the best performance value, and it's also the best performance overall. So Lexar NM790, so I'll open that in a new tab. And my previous recommendation, the Samsung 980 Pro, it's still a great drive, but I'll show you guys the difference here between the two. So you can see here that uh, even though there is some variability in the performance overall from start to end, it's pretty consistent, which is kind of what you want to see when you're working with uh, a drive when you're doing video recording. Let me take a look at the Samsung 980 Pro, it's still plenty fast uh, when you, if, for example, if you connect it with uh, a USB, uh, but uh, it does slow down quite a bit after the first little bit. So it, it only transferred a few gigabytes before the performance dropped on this one quite significantly. So the 5% number, which is kind of what I use for determining performance on this, the 980 Pro, 95% uh, of the time it's going at 1.6 gigabytes or faster. Then with the NM790, it's going at 5.06 gigabytes per second throughout the course, the entire media. So it, it uh, never slows down to those slower speeds like so many SSDs happen to do. And that's pretty important when you're dealing with uh, video recording. So this would be my current recommendation for SSDs when you're doing any sort of video recording. So again, I've been using these for a while since they came out a few months ago. and been very happy. I put I put these in all the computers that I do video editing now at this point. So if you do happen to do this project, I'd appreciate using the links that have popped out throughout the course of this video. That really helps the channel a lot and it makes it possible for me to buy these things for testing. That's where that's that's where the money for this channel actually goes. I don't use it to buy equipment for me or for my production company. It's all for uh, getting equipment for the channel. So I uh, appreciate the help there. Uh, if you have any questions about this, you can certainly ask in the comment section down below, or even better, join us over on Discord. You can go to djp.li slash Discord and sign up for a free account there. Plenty of people that are in the video production world eager to answer questions, and so if you have something you want to talk about there, people will join in and help you out. But I think that's going to about do it for now, so thanks everybody for watching, and have a fantastic day.